All right, let's make this confession. Father, as we hear this kingdom word today, we combine our faith with this word. Our ability to believe has increased. That which you have promised is released into our lives. We will never come up short. We have faith in your word. No good thing shall be withheld from us. Amen, 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 and amen. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Book of Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to use some familiar passages of scripture and we'll, we'll continue. We're continuously talking about faith. I didn't know how much of a, uh, uh, a deficit there was in faith until we started teaching and preaching about faith and what we need more than anything after we've gone through this pandemic, we need to hear messages about faith to build our faith because if we don't build our faith, we will hinder God's plan for the kingdom. It takes faith. It takes faith to advance God's purpose. It does. You can't, you can't just advance it through a thought. You have to have faith to advance God's purpose. So in Matthew 6 and verse 31, I'll read from 31 down to 33. It reads this way in Matthew 6 and 31. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For all, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the right proper alignment with God and all these things shall be added to you. Spirit of the living God, take a hold of my mind, think with my mind, feel my heart so much that my mouth is overflowing, that I spew out the truth of your word, the truth of your kingdom upon all those who are listening. I cannot speak unless you have spoken to me. I cannot go unless you have sent me. Father, I agree now with the sending. I agree with the speaking. And therefore, God, my faith is in dear that I will bring some revelation or some understanding to your word that will unlock generations of abundance that have held your people i decree and declare even before i teach and preach this message they are free in Jesus' name i pray amen amen and amen go ahead and take your seats take your seats again i want to celebrate all these other men and women of god who are gathered here on a wednesday night we don't do anything to twist their arms it's not mandatory for them to be here they have their own free will they just choose to be in the house. Uh, Apostle Acklin, I don't know if he's driving from Huntsville or, or, or Columbus, Georgia. I don't know which one, but he's coming from somewhere. I know Pastor Gary is coming from Tuscaloosa. I know Pastor Sale. Is that Brent? Or you, are you living in Brent now? Calera, he's living, so he he's driving from Calera. So they're not just, you know, right down the street. They're choosing to be with us. Come on, let's celebrate them. So evidently we got something going on if they would travel like that to come. Yeah, it's worth you driving 10 minutes away. They drove for 45 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour. I want to read to you a little bit more out of uh, the book of Luke chapter 17, starting in verse 20. The book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And then I'll go over to uh, Hebrews 11. I'll read verse 1, and then later I'll read verse 6. Luke chapter 17, don't try to go there all at once. Uh, Luke 17... Verse 20. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, this was, that was the religious people of that day, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation or act of watching, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. So people are looking for a visual form of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within us. Now let's go over to Hebrews 11 and verse 1. 
Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Jesus was always having challenges with these scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees. They still come to church. I'm being nicer. I chose in this part of my life, I won't give them as much attention, but they still come to church. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the kingdom of God, you can't physically see it. The kingdom of God, you can't physically see it. And then Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you can't see the things that we're believing by faith, nor can you see the kingdom that it derives from. So if everything is not seen, you have no choice but to increase your faith in order for it to exist. So the kingdom cannot exist without your faith. And what you're hoping for cannot exist without your faith. Verse 6, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to, to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. If you could see him, why would you seek him? So when we gather like what we do, we're seeking him. You never seek anything that's in plain sight. So if you're going to experience it, you have to look for it. You have to seek for it. A church experience without your seekers on is a waste of time. You got to put some energy into it. Faith that gives access. What, what does faith do? Faith causes us to seek after what we believe exists. I seek after the kingdom because I believe the kingdom exists. Do I see it? No, I don't see it, but I am seeking after it because I believe that it exists. I, I, may not, I may not be healed, but I believe that healing exists. So when I come to a setting like this or I'm streaming in, I am seeking a word to direct me and reinforce the fact that I am cancer free. I know what the doctor said. I have the facts, but I am seeking the truth that's not on the surface and nor is it on the doctor's report. I am, I am not, I am not seeking the thing I am seeking the one who has the thing <laughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. the problem is not the thing and, and if we seek the thing that we see what if God wants to give you something better than the Joneses have And we have a tendency, let me tell you why some people have a problem with you. You have what they want. Good evening, Bishop. <laughs> they're, they're upset with you not knowing that if they seek the one that gave it to you, If they gain more understanding of the one who gave it to you and how he operates and his order and his structure, they will get that and more. But, 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 but they limit God to what he does for Stephen Davis. 
none of these preachers in this room should limit themselves by my success. Every son of mine has a greater success in him. People like me never intend to be the best to all generations. I'm the best to my generation. There are those who will live longer than me that should do better than me. But they gotta, they, 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 they gotta seek him so he can show them. So this, this, this kingdom exists that we can't see. This hope exists that we can't see. So you know, maybe God doesn't give it to you because you're just trying to match what already exists. Maybe what you call faith is not faith. It's just an anticipation and excitement about somebody, what somebody else has achieved. And, and if God gave it to you, it will limit the next generation. I'll talk about that. It will limit what you're supposed to hand over. Don't look around, but just say, you're thinking too small and you're asking too small. Don't look around, just say it. You're thinking too small and you're asking too small. So, so if Matthew 6 and 33 says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And then Hebrews 11 and 6 says at the latter part in it, uh, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. So you seek the kingdom and you seek him. Let's change that up. You seek him and you seek the kingdom. And then all this stuff. <laughs> all this stuff starts coming out of the invisible realm into the visible realm. All because you found him for a moment. The problem with religion is hanging out in yesterday. God will initiate a new search every day. The God that you learned yesterday has moved on. And he's too vast and too much to be revealed in one day. In fact, he showed God he cannot be revealed to, to his totality in your lifetime. So you have to keep seeking him. You have to keep seeking him. The thing that happens to most believers is they stop believing. And you can tell when they stop believing because they stop seeking. Life never becomes stale when you're searching. I am, I am so driven by finding him. Woo, I understand something I didn't understand yesterday. I found something. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. So if I can put what I want at the tail end of my search, I can't prioritize what I want and see most of us are driven by what we want and not by who we need to seek. He didn't say want and you shall find. He says seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. See, when, when I was brought into the kingdom, they, they taught us back in the day, they talked about, you got to seek the Lord. Every day you got to seek the Lord. When you're praying, you're seeking. When you're in your Bible, you're, you're seeking. How does this thing work? 
how do I get this in here? Because in order for this to work, it has to get in me. It has to get in the soul of my heart to start germinating. So every promise is void as long as it's outside of me. But when it comes in me, and they, they can't see it, but I see it. They don't believe it, but I am convinced of it. Because it is no longer outside of me, it's in me. You become unstoppable when you are convinced of a thing. Because you're motivated from within. You're not coming, you're not watching because somebody told you to. You, you, you're seeking there's something that has happened on the inside of you that you really can't describe to people who are not seekers. And they think that your ninth month will never come. They think that your harvest season will never come because they keep looking on your field and all they see is dirt. See, all of, it, it seems like all of a sudden it hits. No, it's not all of a sudden it hits. You were seeking. Every day you were seeking. Some came to greet. Some came to us. Some came to sing. Some came to play. Some came to preach and teach. Somebody came seeking. Somebody said, none of that matters. Because if I have that and I am not seeking, I won't be satisfied anyway. I am, I, am, I am seeking because I am commanded to seek. And if he commands me to seek, I shall find. Who am I seeking for? Not what I'm going to wear, not what I'm going to drink. I'm not seeking that. All this stuff is, I got it in my notes, but I, I might as well just talk out of side of my notes and I know what my notes say. All this stuff is a bonus for not giving up my search. Everything you jealous of is a bonus because I didn't give up my search. That's why I hadn't lost my mind because I, I wasn't seeking the stuff that makes you, you lose your mind. I sought the one who gives me peace of mind. Because stuff can be a torment to you if you don't seek the one who gives you peace of mind. I saw the prince of peace and he brought all of his stuff. How many of you leave that alone? It's just, I'm talking about it. So, so the problem has been, there's been such a struggle because we're, we're blinded by need and others are blinded by greed. And the reason he wants you to search for him is he wants you to be the conduit of which he flows through. When you seek him and you understand his kingdom it's about releasing a supply into the earth that doesn't exist without the relationship between you and him. So he says, I, I need to get something into the earth and the only way I can get it into the earth because somebody wants me to be Santa Claus. And they want me to load up their tree. But he said, no, 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 no. If they seek me and they understand me, they understand I want to load up orphans trees. Can't help but have a loaded tree when you're thinking about an orphan. 
See, see, I am, I am learning that what God gives me is not all for me. Because I've been seeking him. I've been seeking him. And while I'm seeking him, I become more and more unselfish while I'm seeking him because I'm learning his ways. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I, I am learning his ways so he will not hold back. There is no way that God will send you under the influence of a Stephen A. Davis without wanting to load you down with stuff you don't have room enough to receive. There is no way that God will let you hear me utter a word, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, whether you be an usher, whether you be in the children's area, whether you be in the ministry, there is no way he will allow you to be around me and start to learn his ways and him not overload you that you don't have enough time to give away what he's bringing into your life. You need to save that energy where you're trying to get because you're going to need it for what you got to give. So, so religion is trying to understand this concept. Religion is just, it's just like these scribes and Pharisees. I've been around a long time, so I know everything. They didn't know anything. They had missed it. They stopped seeking. When they stopped seeking, they stopped knowing. It's another day. We are not in the day that we were in prior to this pandemic. We're in a brand new day. Only seekers know that. Those who are religious, they're trying to get back to a day. God said, that's why I destroyed that day, so I can move you forward. Some of y'all still trying to, trying to build that, 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 that uh, <laughs> golden calf. So, so I am now, my faith is getting access. So we preach about the kingdom. The kingdom is only accessed by faith, which means that if I don't believe the message of the kingdom, I cannot access the kingdom. I have to believe the message because the message gives me access. Being excited is nothing. Having access is everything. So I hear about this place I can't see as an African-American black man. Which says to me that God wants to be good to me regardless of my color and regardless of the opposition that I will have for the assignment on my life. Which is to me when he agrees that I will succeed at what I do because I am seeking him. So while I'm seeking him, I learn his character. No good thing will I withhold from you. So for every bad moment, there's some good moments that are coming in my life. So I can walk through my turbulent times because my good times are just right around the corner. So, so this, this place that only exists in the hearts, in the minds of people who have received the message, whose report shall you believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. Now, I've, I've been a decent guy most of my life. I wasn't a hell raiser, okay? I wasn't a hell raiser. So, and I would have lived somewhat of a stable life. But God had an over-the-top life for me that I didn't know about until I started seeking him. What life have you settled for? See, I, I was, I, you know, I have, I have a brother. Uh, I won't call his name, but I, I have a brother. He's a, he's a hard worker. I'm like, man, do you ever rest? Do you ever sit down? He has a good work ethic. And he works all the time. 
but he lives average. And, and, and when I see him without searching, that's what I would have been. I would have been that average hard worker, show up every day on time, work however many hours needed to be worked, done exactly what supervision asked me to do, and always done it well. Somebody say this with me, but God has something better for me. I didn't know it. I didn't know it until I started seeking. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. When, what you heard from uh, Apostle Ackland's testimony, when, at a certain point, when he started seeking, he realized where he was was not God's plan for his life. See, when he realized that, he started talking to the outside and said, I'm coming. I'm coming. See, when you, when you start seeking him and you seek his kingdom, you realize what's got you locked up can't keep you. So whatever has had you locked up for a period of time, you might as, get re might as well get ready. This is your release moment. Because you're, you're not just attending church. You're not just serving in the church. You are a seeker. And as long as you're seeking, you shall find. Never stop knocking he has more than one door of access for you when you stop knocking you only enter into one access door When, when, we, when we think about Simon Peter, they, they, they took him into the, through the iron gate, took him through the first ward, took him through the second ward, into the third ward. Some things have tried to lock you so deep in because your purpose is so strong. And if you can get this message, you're coming out gate by gate, door by door. And I'm telling you, when you get to that last one, it's going to open on its own accord. I'm telling you, they're going to, they upgrading stuff. When you get within two feet of it, that door is going to open. Because that's what the kingdom of God is like. And we've just been trying to work you. Every time you come, because you're a seeker, we move you a little bit closer. And a little bit closer. And a little bit closer. And a little bit closer. Because something in you registers and says, this is not all that God has for me. This is not all that God wants to do through me. This is not all that God is going to do in my life. This is not all that God's going to do through the people I'm supposed to touch. Do you have any idea how many people you're supposed to touch? How many people you're supposed to help? How many people you're supposed to get delivered? How many people you're supposed to set free? Do you have any idea of what the Lord wants to do with you? No wonder the devil was trying to lock you so deep in there. But all of a sudden, when you were deep down in the dungeon, you heard a message. And somewhere on the inside of your face says, it can be. You walking around there, everybody else talking about you're going to be here forever. You thinking in your mind and in your heart, no, I'm coming out of this. Oh, God's going to raise me up. Huh? My freedom is coming. My breakthrough. My breakthrough is right, right around the corner. I don't care what y'all say. I ain't even eating lunch with y'all no more. I'm going to move to another table. If I got to sit by myself, I'm going to talk to myself and tell myself I ain't going to be around these crazy people all my life. I'm coming out of this. I don't care what you try to lock me in. I don't care about my education. I don't care if I'm a male or female. I don't care how old I am. I am coming out of this. Uh, God's going to make me a millionaire before I'm 15 years old. I'm coming out of this all my family's been in poverty and I used to think like them until I heard a message that I believe and something on the inside of me started leaping and said there is more that God has for me they brought me into the church they introduced me to Jesus 
and let me, left me laying on the sofa as an infant, never telling me there's another entrance door that I can walk through. So I spent 30 years immature in the kingdom because all they knew how to do is get me saved. Now they're telling me to wait on death so I can go to heaven. But I'm going to live heaven while I'm in this earth because now I've heard a message that gives me access to all these other doors in my life. And I not just want a door. I don't just want a window. I got access to gates now. Cities are open to me. Countries are open to me. And they tried to limit me and tell me all I can be is saved. Anyone who told you no was not your door. Anyone who told you you could not was not your door. Grab another knob and turn it. need is one to open and my faith is going to explode. I can go through 20 shut doors that are locked. Let me twist one and one open. I'm going to grab the next level, next dimension, and I'm going to start turning every door because I got enough faith to believe if one door will open, there are some other doors that they fail to lock on me. The institutions and the organization that, that were planning and strategic about locking you out and locking you down fail. They didn't have good security. There's somebody that got lazy when they were checking the doors. That's the very door that you're about to walk through. I came to tell somebody tonight, they didn't do that job well. In the time you're in the world, there's a little bit of laziness that gets on you. But you don't check everything out. They didn't realize that you were going to hear something, believe something, and walk into something. See, in order to stop me, you got to stop me from seeking. And I protect my seeking times. I protect my seeking time because my seeking time is what gives me access. Ah, you can't do nothing. You ain't got, you ain't got enough of this and you ain't got enough of that. You know, it may seem like there's more women around there. Watch me build a warrior of an army out of a bunch of females that say I'm a wild woman. It don't matter. Don't let nobody ever tell you what you can or can't do. You can do all things through Christ who give you the strength. I just need some men that are sure and said, I got your back, man of God. You raise up whatever you need to raise up. We didn't come to take sides. going through that door. I, I, I know I can get through a door. I've been through too many doors. You're going to tell me I can't get through a door. I can get through a door. I'm going to get through a door. I may be up all night twisting knobs, but one knob is going to open up. And I'm telling you, when I come through, baby, I'm bringing this army through the door with me. I said I'm bringing the army through the door with me. I'm bringing refresh, refresh nation. I'm bringing apostolic global impact. I'm bringing all my apostle brothers. I'm bringing all my pastor sons. I'm bringing them all through the door. You you better get ready because I'm taking you through that door. You're not going to be sitting back. You're not going to be, no, 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 no. I'm bringing you through that door. You better get yourself ready. Get your shoes on. Put your garment on. We're going through that door. My, my faith, my faith says I can take all of us. <laughs> my, my faith says I don't have to go alone. So I'm reaching out to anything that'll believe in the word that's coming out of my mouth. And if you can get yourself together for about five seconds, baby, I'll move you into a dimension you never thought you could go into. Somebody take the next second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, shout!
I think I can, I think I can, I think I can for years. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can for years. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. All of a sudden, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. I believe there's some people under the sound of my voice. You're not thinking you can anymore. Something down on the inside of you says, I know I can. I know I can. I know. I know I'm victorious. I know I'm triumphant. If you know you can, raise your voice one more time for the Lordship of Jesus Christ. At a certain point in your sinking, at a certain point in your seeking, you become fully persuaded. At a, at a certain point while you're seeking, yeah, you're having issues just like everybody else, but you, the difference between you and them is you're seeking. At a certain place like Abraham, you become fully persuaded. Yeah, it's the 25th year since I got my word. But on the 25th year, I am fully persuaded. The negative stuff I hear doesn't even sway me anymore. The doubters don't even sidetrack me anymore. The attacks don't even mean anything anymore. Every attack is an announcement that I'm some a bad, I'm a bad somebody. <laughs> I'm a bad somebody. Tim, I realize if they bring out that kind of artillery against me, I thought I was just a little bit of a tank. No, I ain't no little tank. I must be somebody. You must be somebody. If the devil brings out all that artillery to try to stop you, you must be somebody. Pull yourself together. Start rejoicing over the fact that somebody came against you to announce to you that you are bad somebody. shooting every fiery dart they can they don't know it they don't know that you already got a word about every fiery dart every negative word every assault you already got a word no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper so now that you got your word you ain't even you don't even flinch when it comes now you you don't you don't even take a second guess now you want to know why there's a word over your life that sends back boomerangs to every attack against your life i decree and declare that a force field comes over your life tonight because you're sure from the inside out i'm saying from the inside out from the inside Side out, they can't kill it because they can't see it. How do you attack my courage? How do you attack my faith? It's on the inside of me. You gotta, you gotta do surgery. You got to have a telescope. You gotta have some kind of surgical tools to get there. So I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna hide it, but I'm gonna produce it too, baby. They just fall your arms and say you're not going to get this. This is too precious to me. This is what got me through last year. This is what got me through the years before that. No, no, no. Because God got something great and it's locked up on the inside of me. But I came to make an announcement. Tonight it flourishes. What's on the inside of you? Oh, what's on the inside of you? Starts breaking through the soul, breaking through the dirt, breaking through the darkness, breaking through the adversity.
portion breaking through the trial is breaking through. And if you know it's breaking through, I got to go. But I need to give you just a little bit more time because there's a breakthrough. There's a Perez anointing it.